so excited and honored to be able to present this very dynamic and exciting and very important exhibition um, with uh, Natalie Christensen and Jim Ayer. Um, I don't want to talk too much. I want to give these guys some prime time to really talk about what's behind their work, how they create it, and then give you guys a little bit of an opportunity to ask some questions afterwards. Uh, so with that, if audience members can kind of come on this side, we'll have Jim and Natalie up on this uh, part of the room and um, give them their moment. Wow. Yeah, hi you guys. Um, thank you all for being here and supporting us. I'm nervous, but I, I'm always nervous before I talk. Um, I see some familiar faces, so that makes it a little easier. Um, Jim and I have been collaborating for about four years. Yeah, 2017 we started. Yeah, we met on Instagram in probably 2016 and 2015 and started following each other's work and somehow Jim said, maybe we should collaborate and it's like, what are we going to do? And uh, somehow we figured it out. Um, this is our fourth exhibition, I yeah. think. And this work is specifically about COVID and our experience of the pandemic over the last two years. The work started in, um, I get lost. 20, 2020, yeah. like probably May or April. Yeah. And it continued until the end of 2021. Um, Jim and I meet in a digital studio. He lives in the UK, I live here. So all of this work is created through direct messages on social media platforms and uh, email and the occasional phone call and Zoom. Um, we noticed early on in the pandemic that we were spending a lot more time in our phones and as a place that we went for connection and support and community and um, we have always been interested in social media. That was what our work was about initially. We were interested in um, the impact of those platforms on the creative process, like influencing the decisions we made as artists, like how that positive reinforcement of likes and follows and comments might be shaping what we made. And so this work sort of springs from that, but I think it's more of, these are altered landscapes, as you can see. It's almost our internal psychological landscape during the pandemic. And these pieces over here were created early. And to me, they reflect some naivete about the early pandemic and how long we were gonna be in this. And you know, it's not gonna last that long, is it? And then as we progressed, <laughs> The pieces became more complex and more layered and more chaotic. Um, I'm talking too much. No, no, no. <laughs> um, and this piece over here is the, the final uh, two-dimensional work that we created, and its title is Un, Un is in parentheses, Protected. That was made last summer when we thought we were coming out of it and things were looking safer and maybe this is over and meanwhile Jim was in the UK and the Delta variant was coming on strong there and he was saying just wait it's coming for you guys <laughs> I know it's not <laughs> we're gonna be fine um, this piece behind us is called variant and then s in parentheses obviously because there are multiple ones and from this sprung these sculptures. Um, they morphed into these three dimensional black steel specimens of uh, variants. And um, they're individual pieces that can be constructed in a multitude infinite ways. Um, they're printed on black steel. We actually left our digital studio and went into a real studio last fall and we created these together. Um, 
your turn. <laughs> hey, uh, it's lovely for you all to be here. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, but no, thank you for coming out and um, well done for surviving the pandemic. Um, no, it's not over, but you know, it's, it's great that you're all safe and sound and, and well. Um, yeah, so what's interesting about this piece in particular because it doesn't sort of follow the same chaotic, well it is chaotic, but not in its sort of form, but it, it's when variance sort of was, the word was spoken about, it became more scientific. The words, the word was scientific. There was the variant B dot one spot, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, and then all, all of a sudden graphs started appearing and, all became very scientific. And weirdly, I had COVID during this piece. So late 2020. Yeah, maybe. yeah. So, and I, I had it quite badly. Your and whole family had it. Yeah, and, and that sort of reflected in the tones <laughs> of this picture, but also the, the lines and the angles was a sort of scientific approach that I was sort of feeling at this time. And, and then that's, then that's where this, these forms came from. You know, they, they triangulated. Um, and what's really lovely about these is that, as Nancy said, they're all individual, so they can be rearranged, but they're all unique. Like everyone has a different print and a different fold to them. And so if you were to take it home, then you rearrange it. And that sort of, it's a nice energy to sort of reflect your experience of the pandemic yourself. So they're, they're ever evolving, and that's why they're variant was. That's variant one, two, and three. So um, even even when we're going to produce more of these, they'll keep morphing into different sizes, different prints, and that sort of stuff. But but yeah, and then the process of this is 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 a really it's a fascinating one because it always starts by a conversation, doesn't it? And at, at the time when it all sort of was becoming a thing. Um, we were just having these really sort of heavy conversations, and um, and I don't, I'm not sure even how we started to produce them, but we did, and um, and then that's where our previous work kicks in, uh, and how it works is that via the conversations we start sharing images just naturally. Um, and then, and then I sort of put them together, and then I send it to Natalie, and she goes, well, "What about this?" Or she'll send me an image, and okay, that's nice. And, and then before long, we're starting a, a visual conversation rather than a word of mouth one. Um, and and then ultimately they manifest when they're ready. There's no sort of set time; they just sort of come to be. Um, so the process is, is crazy, and, and some of them, uh, some of them are quite simplistic, and then some of them are really complex. I think there's about, I'm not sure how many images, about 36 images on this one, um, and they're all sort of comped together. And also, what's also strange is to get them to print, you have to deal with different resolutions. But sometimes, um, Nasty would have a beautiful image, and uh, but it'd be a phone image. So that's where you get these weird blurs between a high resolution image and, um, a, a, and a low, low resolution. Like texture. Uh, yeah, like we really like that. It's, we're being honest to our, to, we're being honest to the images that, that we were using. So, but yeah, that's sort of how they're created. There's no master plan. There's no sort of. And it's never, yeah. well, let's make an image about this no, or no. that. They just sort of intuitively come together yeah. and we think of what, what's the title. Yeah. Is and it finished? Or, or and or there would be a word. Like protected. Yeah, that was all around the vaccine, wasn't yeah. it? That's we thought of, that was our ticket. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. But, you know, but they, they and variants. I mean, they're all, they're all words that become our <coughs> everyday language now. Um, so sometimes it's driven by a word, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's just a, an image that sort of manifests itself. But, um, but yeah.
Would you guys mind talking just a little bit about the symbolism and how that comes together and the composition? And then after that, um, can we touch on the, the video uh, yeah. as well? Because that's an important part of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. Well, the video, do you want to see the video? Sure. The video is this little film in the corner. Um, but it's actually a really powerful film, and it'd be, it'd be really great if you got the QR code and, and actually watched it in your own time. It's about eight minutes long. But it's a compilation of stuff that we were documenting and sending to each other. So, so they would all, like video something on the TV. Mm. And I'll be going, oh my god, have you seen it? Because we're in different parts of the world. So we were sort of having these conversations just on a whole like shocking level. Um, and it's a really powerful film because you forget what we've all been through. It's so easy to discount it. But the film is a really good um, marker that sets the work off. But it's also it's it's on a it's on a phone because we wanted to keep it true to the experience that we were sharing it. We didn't want it sort of blown up and big and glamorized. It's just a, it's a true reflection of, of a whole journey we've been on. Mm -hmm. In terms of symbolism and our, both of our personal works, um, we tend to shoot very familiar, mundane sorts of objects, but elevate them into metaphorical sorts of scenes. And so in these pieces, while they, they have a lot going on, that that same thing is happening in these, where we're trying to share our emotional experience through flattened cones and sad trash cans and <laughs> turned over chairs and shadows. And um, yeah, they're, they're colorful and, and a lot, you know, my work obviously is made here, and so the light creates a different feel than work that's made in the UK, but um, yes, we it's all symbolic work to you to interpret the meaning of it. Did I answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have anything else that you'd like to, to share about creating this work that you feel is necessary? To support us, and um, I know you all had your own experience over the last two years. Hopefully, you find some of that in this work. Yeah. And with that, you guys, let's open it up to any kind of questions, comments that you can like direct. I should know this. <laughs> 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 Again, the kind of talking about naivete, I think we all thought, <clears throat> I did, the virus was like one entity. It wasn't going to shift, I'm not a scientist, to shift and change, and clearly it started to do that. And I was consuming so much news, like just constant, and that's also kind of speaks to that film. Uh, we realized this is shifting and changing, and so this became the largest piece, but we thought, let's break it up somehow. like like a variant, let's have it sort of hint at it's about to become something else, and then we we took it into these sculptures, which it actually did. Yeah. Because of the crowd, people now realize that it has several different parts going on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a complex layer, it's, a, it's a, so layered. I mean, the, the original image in its raw state, I mean, it goes on and it's infinite layers in Photoshop, but, you know, again, what's really interesting is when you come up close to it, you can sort of see the difference in texture, and I think that really sort of creates a sort of disorientation when you look at it, because things should be perceived to be closer to the front, but they're stuck behind something blurry, it's, it's a really abstract sort of thing, but, yeah. I saw a hand, Jane. All of these fragments seem kind of fragmentary, a little bit jaded, which I think sort of reflects the, the state that we are all in, trying to absorb information from all directions and having our lives disrupted. But the 
the masterpiece, the epic piece. Um, did you guys think about Guernica at all? Because it's got that kind of dynamic, you know, action moving through space kind of quality. Did you? But I mean, maybe you did. I didn't. <laughs> I don't know my influences until someone puts it in front of me. I'm like, oh my god! I didn't know I was working out of it. So I. No, I think, I think <coughs> weirdly, it's it was just to do with. Uh, it's an experience thing because, as as I was saying, I had COVID during the making of this, and I was really ill for I had it really bad for about three weeks, and then I had long COVID for a bit too. So you know, so this is a, a true reflection of that, and it was a, it was an aggressive, you know, angry, felt dirty. All of those sort of things that we were going through, and I was getting, uh, Natalie was going, oh gosh, you know, it's, it's sort of, but you know, it sort of, it just developed into this way, but it's all to do with the scientific approach uh, of the variant, and that's why the angles, it was just a way of talking about science in our way. That's, that's where the angles, yeah, the maths, the maths. <laughs> <laughs> so we, always have, we always have a debate, is it maths or maths? <laughs> Math or maths. You're in America, yeah. it's math. <laughs> <laughs> so the maths became like a really big thing for, for the piece. And that's, the angles just reflect that rather than being sort of a more free-spirited sort of um, document. This, this, this seems to have more of a, an angle of motion to it, I would say. I came in late, so you may have talked about this, but how does your collaboration work? Do you think it's <laughs> specific different roles and, uh, and I guess I, I gather your long distance yeah, yeah. Um, 5,000 miles apart yeah. um, <laughs> it starts with um, so we, we work with our archives we don't like shoot for the collaboration and um, Jim will start a sketch he'll send it to me he'll just screenshot images from my personal Instagram mm -hmm. and um, like I don't send him a bunch of photos until we've kind of decided on, on what the piece is going to be. Yeah. But then it's back and forth through uh -huh. direct messages mm -hmm. um, where we just communicate in that way until we get to the final piece. Uh -huh. we, we, we've said this before, but we call it our virtual studio because it's all done so virtually. It's a digital yeah. collaboration, digital by nature. And this is what's interesting about the physicality of of the sculptures because it, it's a whole new world for us. And it's all with archive photos? Yeah. You, have, you don't, yeah. we need this and then no, we yeah. something. No. But we both have pretty extensive, <laughs> lots to choose yeah. from, mm -hmm. I think. But I think that process, you know, it might develop, but I think that comes from our first body of work of Altered States, Altered Scapes, where, mm -hmm. but it's all about our Instagram experiences and that's why we wanted to use images that people might remember and then we just carried on with that it's just developed but even in those early days this is this is the this is actually the big one well, in the early days we we chose two of each images and we, we smashed them together to create a new story whereas these are hugely complex and it's weird but even how did you say it's some lovely way where it's because we're in a new world and, and we would have time on our hands. So we just sort of started working more into them. I think the pandemic gave us an opportunity to um, be more experimental, to flow a bit more, to, we were so confined in real life that we expanded mm -hmm. creatively. Uh, I don't think that would have happened mm -hmm. otherwise. Um, I mean, I don't know for sure. But yeah. Feels that way. Thank you. Thank you. As a close observer, I thought your trip to London to do with them and meeting with the machinist mm. was a real turning point in this particular. Mm. Uh, I'll comment on that because that was a lot of this. There was mm. hands on. Yeah. Yeah, um, it was the first time we ever worked side yeah. by side after almost four years mm. to like be there and like make decisions about what section of the print were we going to use and what colors and mixing colors on site and you know not knowing when we screened what this was actually going to look like 
and we could never create these again. Yeah. It's, it's one. And Unique variants. Yes. <laughs> Unique variants. <laughs> but no, it's, it is interesting. Like each, because they, they look solid, but they're all separate. They're all separate bits of steel. And then each bit of steel is, has its unique fold and it has its unique print on it. So they really are a, a sort of one off thing that can't be replicated. Um, but yeah, in terms of the, the, the meeting, this is. And when we, I arrived here on Wednesday and we, we hired out a studio space and we worked together again for our second time and we folded them and we started, started playing with them and looking at them and trying different layouts and all that sort of thing. So it's, it's amazing to think that this is all done after meeting twice in how, how many years? Or oh, working twice. In yeah, five, the last two five years. years. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's incredible, really. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? I just want to say something. Yeah. Um, I want to say that it's incredible to have a body of work that is so successful in documenting in an abstract way what we've all just been through. And it's really remarkable to me. Uh, I remember in January 2020, the end of January 2020, was when I took my last trip, you know, before the pandemic started, or the pandemic had started, but I didn't know it. And, um, and now, two years later, we're standing here. This is the first opening we've had without masks. You know, um, and, and we're packed full of people, you know, for the first time since the pandemic started. So it's, it's really nice to have this space from what we've just gone through and see such a beautiful interpretation of it. So just like I think, you know, there are paintings that, um, like the death of Marat, you know, that represents the French Revolution, you know, that become there are works of art that become the spokesperson or the spokes thing for something that civilization went through. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's gonna be really incredible to see bodies of work like this in 100 years, wow. you know, wow. that, and this is what people will remember about what we went through. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you.